In this video, we're gonna see how to use PHP to validate form data. Here, we will use regular expression to validate the form data. You can use regular expressions to match and validate the text that user enters. Ordinary characters are combined with special characters to define the match pattern. The validation succeeds only if the user input matches the pattern. Regular expression is a sequence of characters that form a search pattern. Regular expression can be a single character or more complicated pattern. And it can be used to perform all type of text search and text replace operations. In PHP, regular expressions are strings composed of delimiters, a pattern and optional modifiers. The delimiter can be any character that is not a letter, number, backslash or space. The most common delimiter is the forward slash. But when your pattern contains forward slashes, it is convenient to choose other delimiters such as hash or tilde. PHP provides a variety of functions that allow you to use regular expressions. PregMatch, PregMatchAll and PregReplace functions are some of the most commonly used ones. Here we use the PregMatch function. The PregMatch function will tell you whether a string contains matches of pattern. A pattern consists of one or more character literals, operators or constructs. Regular expression patterns are often used with modifiers also called as flags that can redefine the regular expression behavior. Modifiers can change how a search is performed. Regular expression modifiers can be regular and inline. The most common modifiers are global, case insensitive, multi-line and total modifiers. Validation in PHP is a process where we check the user entered data in form fields are correct or not using HTML code. So validation means checking the input submitted by the user. Form validation is a necessary process before the data entered in the form is submitted to the database. This is done to avoid unnecessary errors. In PHP form validation, the script checks for the data in respective field based on the rule set by the developer and returns an error if it does not meet the requirements. There are two types of validation are available in PHP. Client-side and server-side. In client-side validation, the validation is performed on client machine web browsers. In server-side validation, the data is submitted by the user to the server. And the data sent to the server is validated in server machine. Now we will build and validate a small web form using HTML and PHP. The form is created using HTML and validation and processing of the form's content is done with PHP. We will learn some basic HTML form elements and how their data is accessible to PHP scripts. The form we created contain a number of inputs like text field, radio button and submit button. These inputs will be validated to ensure that the user has supplied a value for each one. If one or more fields are empty, the form will be displayed again. This time, however, the empty field will have an error string next to them. If none of the fields are empty, the supplied value will be displayed in a simplistic fashion. To show the value in the input field after user hits the submit button, we add a little PHP script inside the value attribute of the following input fields. Like name, email, website. In comment text area field, we put the script between the text area tags. This little script will output the value of the name, email, website and comment variables. Then we also need to show which radio button that was checked. For that we must manipulate the checked attribute. The PHP super globals dollar underscore get and dollar underscore post are used to collect the form data. Both get and post create an array. This array holds key and pair values where key or the name of the form controls and value or the input data from the user. Both get and post are treated as dollar underscore get and dollar underscore post. These are super globals which means that they are always accessible regardless of scope and you can access them from any function class or file without having to do anything special. Dollar underscore get is an array of variable passed to the current script via the URL parameter. Whereas dollar underscore post is an array of variable passed to the current script via HTTP post method. Information sent from the form with get method is visible to everyone. So get may be used for sending non-sensitive data. Never use get method for sending passwords or other sensitive information. Information sent from the form with the post method is invisible to others. All the names, values are embedded within the body of the HTTP request. And also there is no limit for sending amount of information. In get method, the variables are displayed in the URL, so it is possible to bookmark the page. Whereas in post method, the variables are not displayed in the URL, so it is not possible to bookmark the page. So developers prefer the post method for sending the form data. 
At start of the script, define variables and set to empty values. We check whether the form has been submitted using $_server request method. If the request method is post, then the form has been submitted and it should be validated. If it has not been submitted, skip the validation and display a blank form. However, in this program, all the input fields are optional. So the script works fine even if the user does not enter any data. The next step is to make input fields required and create error message if needed. The name, email, gender fields or the required fields and these fields cannot be empty and must be filled out with HTML form. And there are some validation rules for filling the form. The required name field must contain only the letters and white spaces. The required email field must contain a valid email address with at symbol and dot symbol. Website is an optional field. If present, it must contain a valid URL. Comment field is also an optional field. It is a multi-line input field text area. Gender is a required field. You must select one. Here we added some new variables with dollar symbol. These error variables will hold error message for the required fields. We have also added an if-else statement for each dollar underscore post variable. This checks the post variable is empty with the empty function. If it is empty, an error message is stored in different error variables. And if it is not empty, it sends the user input data through the test input function. This line of code will check if the name field contains only letters and white spaces. This function is used to perform the pattern matching in PHP on a string. These two forward slash or regular expression delimiters. This operator indicates the start of string. This indicates any match on any letters or hyphen or single quote or space. And this symbol indicates zero or more of preceding character or element range. And this symbol indicates the end of the string. So this block of code will check if the name field contains letters, dashes, apostrophes and white spaces. If the value of the name field is not valid, then store an error message. The pregmatch function searches a string for pattern, returning true if the pattern exists and false otherwise. The easiest and safest way to check whether an email address is well formed is to use filter underscore var function. This function filters a variable with a specified filter. Filter underscore var function has three parameters, var, filter name and options. Here we are using var and filter name. The var is the variable to filter. Filter name is optional, which specifies the ID or name of the filter to use. This function will validate and sanitize data such as email ID, IP address and many more. Validation is to check whether the data entered by the user is in proper format or not. For example, validating an email, we check for at symbol in the email address. Sanitization process removes unnecessary and illegal characters from the data. Sanitization helps us to remove illegal characters entered by the user. To ensure the security of your website data, it is required to perform both sanitization and validation. This code snippet will check if the email address is well formed, then store an error message. With this block of code, we check if a URL address syntax is valid. If URL address syntax is not valid, then store an error message. This regular expression allows dashes in URL. This will check if the posted comment field is empty. Then set $comment to empty string. If it is non-empty, then set this variable to the result of test input function with a comment as a parameter. Test input function is user defined function. Look at this code, if no comment has been entered, then it will be empty. If it is not empty, then run the comment through the test input function. This block of code will check if gender was selected. At the end of PHP tag, add this function. Define the test input function that we are calling in the above if statements. This function takes some data, removes any trialing spaces at beginning and end of the input, removes any backslashes, and finally converts special characters into their respective HTML value. This will strip unnecessary characters like extra space, tab, new line from the user input data with a PHP trim function. This line of code will remove backslashes from the user input data with a strip lashes function. HTML special character converts the special character into HTML entities. Now we can check each dollar underscore post variable with test input function. We will pass all the variables through PHP HTML special character function. Here create a form and method post. This function prevents attackers from exploiting the code by injecting HTML or JavaScript code in forms. $_server PHP self variable can be used by the hackers. 
If PHP self is used in your page, then user can enter the forward slash and then some cross-site scripting commands to execute. Cross-site scripting is a type of security attack that enables the attackers to inject the client-side script into the web page. So this can be avoided by using HTML special character function. Create all the details required in the form like name and its input type would be text, email and a website similarly. Common should be the text area and gender and submit button as well. And here we have another PHP script to display all the details. This will display all the variables in the form. Go to NetBeans, create a new project, select PHP, PHP application, click next, next, next and finish. Now copy paste the code for index.php. Save and run the project. If you want to run a PHP file in a browser on your own computer, you need to set up a PHP development stack. And you will need at least PHP, MySQL and server like Apache. MySQL is used to set up database your PHP application can work with. Of course, you can choose to work with other database engines, but MySQL is one of the most popular database to be used with PHP. Instead of downloading all the software separately and configuring to work together, I recommend you to just download and install a program like XAMPP. You can use XAMPP control panel to start and stop all servers. Now start MySQL and Apache server. Download link for XAMPP server is given in description box. Now refresh the page. And here comes the validation form. Now fill the form with necessary details. and click submit and here displays the result if user try to submit the form without filling out the required field an error message for the required field will be displayed 